Materials for this very simple beginner painting are available at the Topeka Art Guild Art for All workshop. You will be provided with Cricut cutouts to fasten to the canvas. Step two is to take three parts of blue, one part of black, and mix that into a paint that you will be using for the background. When you paint the background, you want it to be nice and thin. Smooth out any bumps and be sure to go around the edges. You want this layer to dry very quickly. When painting with acrylic paints, uh, you're going to put layer after layer, and most of the time you want the bottom layer to be fairly dry before you go to the next layer. Step four, when that first layer of paint is dry, remove the vinyl mask using a hobby knife, or if you've got fingernails, you can do this just with your fingernails. Step five, fasten the two smaller vinyl circles onto the canvas. Get them nice and tight. Then you're going to take yellow ochre and simply do a nice smooth layer for the owl body. Now notice the position of the paintbrush here. There's a way to control that edge. Notice how I'm somewhat behind the paint and pressing it forward. This is a technique that will serve you well if you learn how to do it. So part of the purpose of this video is to show you some techniques, some different ways of managing the acrylic paint so that you can learn to use it well. Get it to do exactly what you want. And that push forward technique is very nice anytime you want a, a very controlled edge on your paint. Again, we want to smooth this out as much as possible, mostly so that it will dry quickly. Step seven is the front feathers. And before we put that on, we need to make sure that that first layer is completely dry. So while we wait, a good thing to do is to practice the strokes we'll be using for the feathers. Notice we have yellow ochre and white paint, and we haven't mixed them together. We've left them side by side and done a stroke that's going to give us a bit of a streak, a little bit of each color, not mixed. And this is ideal for feathers. Notice that when we practice this, we want to use the same material as our painting. I'm doing this sample on canvas board so I need a piece of canvas board to do my practice strokes. And initially, I'm just playing with the feel, trying to get a feel for the size, the amount of mixture, and I'm not putting any of these strokes together yet. Next, I'm going to take those strokes and put them close together in a row. The second row, notice, is going to be staggered, sort of like building bricks. This is how you'll actually be doing the feathers on the owl's front. Something to keep in mind, if you are very concerned with the eventual product of this painting, if you really want it to be your very best work, you want to let that yellow ochre layer dry 100%. The beauty of a 100% dry layer is that if you make a mistake, you can go back and easily wash it off. The top layer, when it's wet, will completely wash off uh, and you can start again quite easily. If you're not terribly concerned about that, this yellow ochre layer can still be a bit damp and these heavy textured strokes will still work. The feathers should be heavily textured, but you want to make sure that you go back and smooth things out in the area where you're going to be painting the beak. You don't want ridges to be there in an unexpected place for the beak. So imagine where you're going to paint a beak and smooth that down. Now it's time to go and add some ears. Now for this, you might want to go back and practice a few times, but you want to get a nice thick glob of paint and make a stroke that really has some texture. Again, 
if you have a nice dry canvas and you don't like what you did the first time, you can go back and just wipe this off and try again. But I'm just getting the basic idea here. We want a big old glob of paint because we want to be able to feel this when it's dry. And just roll it on the paintbrush and plop it down. Again, you can take as many tries as you want. Uh, and then I'm just going back and adding a little bit of textured feathers along the top of his head. We also want textured feathers along the side of his head. And more textured feathers along his tail. Step nine is the wings. You're going to use that same method that you used for painting the front feathers, except you're going to use brown and yellow ochre side by side and that same type of stroke to make a lot of feathers. For the branch, we're going to use a solid brown and just paint right across. Make sure that it's below the wings and above the tail. You can make this as thick or thin, as fancy or as plain as you want. Step 11, remove the vinyl circles using a hobby knife. It's best to go from the center. Be very gentle. You don't want to cut through the canvas. Step 12, you're going to add white feathers around the eyes. Just a single color is needed here and you want these nice and heavy duty and textured. You might notice that this paint that I tried at the beginning is just a little bit too thin. If you have the option, get a thicker paint, heavy bodied acrylic paint, and you'll see that you'll have better luck. We want lots of texture here. But in the very center, we don't want that texture because we want to smooth out a spot where we'll paint the actual eyes. The eyes are surrounded with those textured feathers, but the inside portion needs to be as smooth as you can make it. Next, use that same white paint to paint the moon. Now there's different ways of doing this. If you want your moon to be very, very smooth, you want to paint more than one layer and smooth out each layer. It may take three or four to really get it smooth. I happen to love texture with acrylic, so I'm taking my time and I'm adding rings of texture in my moon. But this is just purely a matter of opinion. If you want it nice and smooth, remember that you're going to have to have several layers of very thin paint, one after another, letting it dry in between each layer. Once the white paint is completely dry, you can paint the eye color. Now, an earlier version of this, I made the eyes blue, but I actually like the gold eyes better. You can make the eyes pretty much any color you like. And again, if you have let your paint dry, the bottom layer completely be dry, you can go back and change colors. You can erase this um, quite easily. It's really one of the things that makes acrylic painting so very versatile. While the colored portion of the eye is drying, mix a gray paint from black and white and paint the feet and the beak. As you can see, I didn't practice this and I really want to remove it, so I might as well show how to do that. Get a slightly damp Q-tip and notice if the bottom layer is nice and dry, you can quite easily remove any mistakes you make. This is one of the beauties of acrylic painting. If you don't like something and you've dried your layers, 
you can always remove something with a damp Q-tip. Well, I still didn't get them very good, but keep in mind you can try as many times as you want. Um, this morning, at the time I was repainting this, I had already done quite a few versions and I just wanted to get finished. So, even though I messed up a bit on the beak and on the feet, I know that with acrylic paint I can always go back and tidy things up once a layer is dry. I can just put another layer right on top. For example, I'm getting this lining around the eyes way too thick. I did not get a thin enough brush. I don't have exactly the right consistency of the paint. But I'm going to go ahead and continue working anyway because I know that I can let this dry completely. And then I can just make the gold portion a little bit bigger, painting right over the top of that black. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. You can always go back and fix things in the next layer. Six different canvases were used to make this tutorial, and the first finished painting had blue eyes. I'm going to use this at the end of the video to show you how easy it is with acrylics to make fairly major changes. The blue has been dry for quite some time, so I can easily paint over it, and I had that black portion too wide. So I can go back now with the yellow ochre and notice that I'm making the black line a lot thinner in this layer. Remember that sometimes it's easier to push the paint with the tip of the paintbrush, so spin your canvas around to give you the best angle in the best position to achieve what you want to achieve with that paintbrush and with that paint. I can also go back and make corrections such as this little black spot which since it's completely dry it can be covered with thick white paint. And at this point, I decided that the feathers around the eyes would look better if they had a bit of a gray streak in them. So since my acrylic layers are nice and dry, I can make any of this kind of change that I want. Thank you for watching my very first acrylic painting tutorial. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, and I know there are a lot of mistakes, but this is as good as I can do at this point in my life. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the comments. Thanks.